St. Francis of Assisi presents Massio, Rufino, and Clara. The sun is up already. <laughs> Heavens above! What a greedy... Get out of here! Go away! Go, go, go away! Shoo, shoo! Oh, what a disaster! Ugly pig! I came back because I was needed. But I really miss the forest. Brothers, brothers, Francis just came back. At last. <clears throat> but that wasn't a pig, it was a demon. Look what it did. Maceo, I would like to go back again. I... I miss the loneliness of prayer. It is my fondest wish, Maceo, to be as close to God as I was in the forest. But you can't, Francis. You just came back. You can't go. <clears throat> what do you want me to do? If you need help, just ask for it. What I would like is for you to go to the mountain, to Father Sylvester. Tell him I need his advice. I definitely will. <laughs> and go also to St. Damien, to our sister Clara, and ask her advice too. As you like, Francis. Should I also go to see Sylvester? <clears throat> What's the matter? Would you like me to do something else? What is it? My soul is impatient. I ask only that you go and come back as quickly as you can. Please, brother. If it's what you want, I'll go as soon as I finish here. you here, Friar? How is Francis? Good morning. I've actually come to speak with you about Francis. Is he feeling sick? Does he need medicine? He isn't sick. He wants your advice about a very important matter that's in his heart. Come tell me everything over a meal. Well then, Sylvester, what say you? I think he's tempted by the devil. He wants to see him imprisoned. He wants to take Francis away from this world to silence him. You have to tell him that the devil wants to see him commit the sin of pride, convincing him that there's only truly one who deserves to hear his words. Holy God, Francis is bad for the devil's business. Take this. Thank you. And are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? Yes, Brother Maceo. I don't have any doubt about it. Well then, what would you like me to tell Francis? 
You must tell him that the devil does not wish him to convert bishops and popes. He does not wish them to be turned back to Christ. What you say makes sense, Sylvester. You're right. The devil wants to keep him quiet. Shut his mouth. Very well, Sylvester. I will tell him your thoughts. Tell him that he always has and always will be tested. That's the reason, dear sister, that I have great need for your advice. He needs to be well fed. He brought us here. He can't give up now. Have you thought of what we will do if he isolates himself in a cave? No, I haven't. We are his children. He is the dear master of our souls. Yes, that's very true, Clara. He needs advice. And I will give it to him, Maceo. That is a promise. Francis will understand that we need his love. We need his word and his guidance. Yes, Clara. All compelling reasons. I'm only speaking the truth. I'm uncomfortable with what he has written to me here. I don't think that it's inspired by our Lord. I'm afraid that it's the devil that's seducing him into temptation and wants to shut him away at any price. I agree, Clara. If it is necessary, I'll go look for Francis and I will talk to him. Do you really think the situation is so dangerous? For the devil, Francis is a danger, a constant threat. And I don't think the devil will give up that easy. Where is our dear father? He's in our monastery at the Porziuncola, sister. Well, then go back to him. Convince him. Repeat to him what I have told you this day. Francis! Mm -hmm. I'm back. Francis! Just in time. What did they tell you? The first thing Clara and Sylvester said was that you are hard-headed. And I agree. Maceo... Please, let's get to the point. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry. You're right, Francis. The answer from Sylvester was that you must travel the world to preach because the Lord has chosen you to serve all. And tell me, what has dear sister Clara told you? She said it is God's will you stay and continue with us because you are the master of your children, our father and our point of reference. We would be lost without you. Well then, I will follow God's will. Thank you very much for waiting, Brother Wolf. Brother Son, what would we do if you hid in a cave and didn't come out to shine? What then? <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. <laughs> and God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And so it was. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. This is the origin of our world and we should be thankful to God.
Your will be done, Lord. I will announce your word to my last breath. has talked to me and it's told me I'm condemned. We're all condemned. What? Well, what are you saying? Have you gone mad? If we follow Francis, we will all be condemned. Rufino, that is surely Satan's trap. What you heard was not the voice of God. It was the devil's voice. Ah. Welcome, brother. Uh, I have sinned, Francis. Help me, I beg you. The devil came to me from the crucifix, and he told me I was condemned because I follow you. You needn't worry. I already knew that, my brother. You mustn't pay attention to the devil. He's full of lies. You're right, Francis. I know you're right. You must help me and forgive me. If the devil returns, say, close your mouth. I am with Jesus. Yes, that's how I'll do it. Thank you. Francis and his friars have invited us to pray and eat together. They're waiting for us. Won't it be a problem if we go out of the convent? I've decided to accept their invitation because I think it's fair to share the food with our brothers and all together give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong in what you do if your heart is pure and in perfect harmony. Therefore, there's nothing wrong with praising the Creator with love and sincere faith. Have strength, sisters. Everything will be all right. Sisters, it will be our great pleasure to escort you to the Porcincula. We are taking some bread and cheese with us. Let me help you with that, sister. Thank you, Francis. Thanks, Lord Jesus.
Thank you. Mm. Dear sister. We appreciate your invitation to the Lord's table, dear Francis. Thank you, sister, and all of you for accepting my invitation. This is the occasion to talk about the grace of our Father, which all of us who love God are blessed with. We are His creatures. Everything that exists, He created, and His grace lives through us. He sets us on fire with the Spirit and ignites our souls. His is a flame that doesn't consume. Uh, look, everything over there on the hill is on fire. Let's go! Mountain. The Friars Monastery is burning. Let's go! We Come have on, to help hurry. Them. Let's go. His flame is so fervent that it brings life. It exalts it completely, my children. It torments us. It makes us suffer, but sweetly. My brothers, it's only through God's fire that we can all be truly happy. You have come back, but now I know who you are. Francis knows you very well. Anything that Francis says is a lie. I know you're Satan. I denounce you. something. Oh. I'm sorry. You must forgive my doubts. It was the devil. Get up, brother. You've done well. Calm down. You'll see. He won't ever come back again. This brother has one of the purest souls in the world. Welcome, Your Holiness. Oh, dear children of Francis, my love for you is as my love for him. You, like Clara and the nuns whom I have also come to visit, all of you who live in the church are the voice of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, get up, brother. Wait for me here. I will go alone. I have seen your convent, sister. I have seen where your nuns sleep. You truly have nothing. I implore you, leave the rule the way it is. Don't change the privilege of holy poverty. We want to keep living the way we are. Can't you understand that? We just want to live off our alms. <sighs> That's all we desire and nothing more. You must have an income. You must have something that supports you. 
He has called us the poor, lepers, and the humble. In this way, we must go to him. You can make this decision for yourself, not for your other sisters. There are many women who follow your example. Is it fair to subject them to the hardships you have chosen? Your Holiness, if you take away our poverty, you move us away from Christ. Don't you see that? We chose this. The crucified Christ is our husband, and we don't want it any other way. Our triumph is the cross, and it's our choice. Well then, I won't take away from you the choice of your holy poverty. You will live as you've chosen to live. The Lord has spoken to you, and you have heard him, Your Holiness. God be praised. Mm. Magnificat alma mea Dominum, et exultat in Spiritus meus, et Deus salutari meo, quia respectivum itate nasciae suae, exemi meus homo, beata meni senones generationes, 